NATO was in town. That's right. The NATO summit was in town in Washington, D.C., and Joe Biden gave his remarks to the summit, and um, this made me miss the incoherent Joe Biden. Like, I like him better when he's senile. I do. Because when he's, when he's actually reading properly, what he's saying makes actually less sense than when he's just rambling incoherently. Well, well, his scripted he, content is actually worse, much worse. He threw you a bone at the end there. What's that? He yeah, threw he you a bone, us a bone. at the end. He did throw us a bone at the end. But we're going to first cover the uh, quote-unquote substantive portion of his speech and then hear a little bit from Anthony Blinken as well. In the year 2020, the year I was, the year I was elected president, only nine NATO allies were spending 2% of their defense, GDP on defense. Oh, no. This year, 23 will spend at least 2%. Good. Wow. Woohoo! Yes. More war budgets. And some will spend more than that. Wow. And the remaining countries that have not yet reached that milestone will get there soon. Wow. You know, he may not have all his marbles left, but look at his record. His record is more spending on wars that should never be fought around the world. You know, and it really it puts things in a certain perspective, doesn't it? Because, yeah, he might not have his fastball. He might not be able to skip onto Air Force One, as Bernie Sanders said, but he could still get a world, he could still get a world war going. He can still get a world. And isn't that the most important thing? Shouldn't we prioritize substance over style? Just because he can't talk right anymore doesn't mean he can't get other countries around the world to start, you know, c uh, committing larger percentages of their budgets to uh, wars that murder people for no reason. So when, when you think about it that way, it's really not that bad, is it? I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whenever, whenever I see scenes like this, these real saber rattling scenes, uh, it's kind of a convention of Planet of the Apes movies that very often you'll have uh, the gorillas. Usually the gorillas are supposed to be the, the warlike ones, which is not accurate to the species, but OK. And uh, yes, we are going to get the humans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's what that's what it is. It's, it's just it's just amazing. You know, these are the same people who if they watched a movie that was uh, trying to trying to uh, offer commentary on a, a fascist society, showing everyone clapping for absolutely horrific exactly. propositions. They they would tisk tisk. Oh, look at those Nazis or those communists. This is what they are. He's just, he's 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 describing their commitment to spreading horror around the world and that this is this is how propagandized people are because the underlying assumption it, it's just like israelis you you talk to israelis from the very first coverage i did on october 8th i got those two israeli women young women for, who had both been in the idf and what they keep saying i have them on camera saying this world's most moral army world's most moral army that's what we think that's why even liberals will go along with this as being a good thing, because they are convinced, just like Israeli soldiers are, we are the world's police force. We are moral. We are stopping. We're not causing the horrors. We're stopping the horrors. We're fighting against the horrors. And when we commit mass murder, it's an accident. It's a right. miscalculation. It's so, our hand was forced. We were trying to do good. Yep. The idea that we are a force for murder and genocide, that we are actually the world's mafia don, that never occurs to them. Rally, stand up, the <laughs> yeah. American. This remarkable progress, proof that our commitment is broad and deep that we're ready, that we're willing, we're able to deter aggression and defend every inch of NATO territory across every domain, land, air, sea, cyber, and space. My friends, it's good that we're stronger than ever because this moment in history calls for our collective strength. Autocrats want to overturn global order which is by and large kept for nearly 80 years and counting. Terrorist groups continue to plot evil schemes to cause mayhem and chaos and suffering. In Europe, 
Putin's war of aggression against Ukraine continues. And Putin wants nothing less, nothing less than Ukraine's total subjugation to end Ukraine's <laughs> democracy, to destroy Ukraine's, Ukraine's, Ukraine's culture. He makes more sense when he's senile. He, he makes more yeah. sense when he's mumbling. This is less true than him saying that he fucked the NATO guy's wife. Right? <laughs> You're stepping on it. Speaking of broad and deep, that was one deep broad, that NATO guy's <laughs> wife. <laughs> I haven't, never seen, haven't been with a broad that deep in a while. The wife yeah, 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 the yeah, map. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> surprise, surprise me. I was in the bathroom with Macron's wife. Oh, transverse <laughs> Mendrick uh, swinging around. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and we know Putin won't stop at Ukraine. But make no mistake, Ukraine can and will stop Putin. Don't Today, underestimate the 63-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. Pretty muted applause there for such a rallying cry. You know, yeah. not not a rousing applause. You could say they're not confident. Now, I did edit there to later in the speech. I usually put a flash when I edit, but I forgot. So this is later on in the speech. Now. Today, I'm announcing the historic donation of air defense equipment for Ukraine. Oh, good. The United States, Germany, the Netherlands, Romania, and Italy will provide Ukraine with the equipment for five additional strategic air defense systems. And in the coming months, the United States and our partners intend to provide Ukraine with dozens of additional tactical air defense systems. The United States will make sure that when we export critical air defense interceptors, Ukraine goes to the front of the line. They will get this assistance before anyone else gets it. All told, Ukraine will receive hundreds of additional interceptors over the next year, helping protect Ukrainian cities against Russian missiles and Ukrainian troops facing air attacks on the front lines. Make no mistake, Russia is failing in this war. More than two years into Putin's war of choice, his losses are staggering. More than 350,000 Russian troops dead or wounded. Nearly one million Russians, many of them young people, have left Russia because they no longer see a future in Russia. And key, remember, fellows and ladies, supposed to fall in five days, remember? Was well, still standing two and a half years later and will continue to stand. All right, so look, we've unpacked all the ways in which that is just a giant sack of lies a million times. On this show, the idea that Russia wants to take Kiev and absorb Ukraine into its own border and that they're not going to stop there. I mean, that's just nonsense that's been debunked over and over again. We won't bore you guys with that. But the new details are troubling here, and that is, yes, NATO allies begin transfer of F-16s to Ukraine as leaders meet in the U.S. So here's Anthony Blinken on the side stage, I guess, not the main stage of the summit, in, in the side room. Uh, if this were like the Bonnaroo Music Festival of yeah. Global Terror uh, on the side stage, here's Anthony Blinken announcing the F-16s. And I'm also pleased to announce that as we speak, the transfer of F-16 jets is underway, coming from Denmark, coming from the Netherlands. And those jets, those jets will be flying in the skies of Ukraine this summer to make sure that Ukraine can continue to effectively defend itself against the Russian aggression. So I guess all those yeah, concerns yeah. about them not being trained properly to fly them, eh, whatever. Well, do yeah, it live. Yeah. Fuck it. Do it live. Yeah, uh, they're not going to be flying this summer. Um, they need to be trained on these jets because Ukraine inherited the Soviet Union's jets. They're trained on MiGs. They're not trained on American jets. So it is going to, from what I understand, it's going to take some time to train. In terms of the Biden speech, it's it really shows how low the bar has been set. Because, yeah, it was coherent, barely. He's still, right. he's still mumbling. He's still is not. This is, this is far from uh, FDR's uh, Four Freedoms speech yes, this, is, so. this, yes. this is this is uh <laughs> there's a man who every every everyone was relieved didn't shit his pants in front of the audience 
in terms of the applause, you make a good point. You saw that in both of those clips. Uh, it seems to be dawning on most of them that none of this is a good idea because there's a smattering of applause. It's not, it's not a rousing uh, round of applause from that audience. It's a, it's a few partisans. If they believe Ukraine the would, room. would win, that Ukraine will prevail. That's a standing ovation line in a room right. like that. Right. It was very muted. I mean, it's he's getting just... applause from the defense contractors. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that that's about it because those are the only winners in this. And I do think, you know, just, you know, judging by the tone in that room, because I watched the whole speech, it wasn't that long. I mean, the guy doesn't speak for more than 20 minutes now. I mean, they, right. they're really limiting his stage time because towards the end of that 15 minutes, he starts he saw trailing off. That's where that comes. That's about where he, he lasted about five or six minutes in the debate before he embarrassed himself. And I mean, let, time, me tell, let me tell you, Putin is like the, the rarely seen Madagascan uh, aardvark. He's, <laughs> yeah. very, he's like an aardvark. He's got his nose everywhere like, like an aardvark. He's sniffing around uh, Europe. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but as for these F-16s, the first batch of United States built F-16 fighter jets are being transferred to Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says, as world leaders pledge continued support for Kiev at a NATO summit, in Washington, D.C. Speaking on the sidelines of the summit on Wednesday, Blinken said the F-16s were being transferred from Denmark and the Netherlands. Uh, backing for Ukraine during Russia's invasion of the country is at the top of the agenda at this week's NATO summit in the U.S. capital, where the leaders of the alliance's 32 member countries have gathered. Ukraine has long sought advanced Western aircraft, and U.S. President Joe Biden in August gave the green light to transfer F-16s to the country despite concerns about how long it would take Ukrainian personnel to train to fly the planes, as we said. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who's also in Washington, D.C. for this week's summit, had urged his American and European allies to provide Kiev with more financial and military support to stave off Russian attacks. In a social media post, Zelensky thanked the U.S., Denmark, and the Netherlands for helping to strengthen the Ukrainian Air Force with F-16s. This is a clear signal that Russia's ability to terrorize Ukrainian people, cities, and communities will continue to reduce, he wrote on X. F-16s will also be used to bolster Ukraine's air defense. I'm confident that they will assist us in better protecting Ukrainians from brutal Russian attacks, such as this week's strike on the Akhmadit uh, Children's Hospital in Kiev. NATO members have announced the delivery of five additional Patriot and other strategic air defense systems to help Ukraine, and more aid announcements were expected at this week's summit. In a joint statement on the F-16 transfer, the leaders of the U.S., Netherlands, and Denmark said they were committed to further enhancing Ukraine's air capabilities, which will include squadrons of modern fourth-generation F-16 multi-role aircraft. The coalition intends to support their sustainment and armament, as well as further associated training for pilots to enhance operational effectiveness, they said. We will continue to coordinate jointly in support of Ukraine's ability to defend itself against Russian aggression. The NATO summit falls at a crucial time for Biden, who is facing questions about his health and ability to serve another term as U.S. president after he delivered a disastrous 2024 election debate performance late last month. The Democratic Party leader, who was expected to face off against his Republican predecessor, Donald Trump, in November, has dismissed calls to drop out of the race. During an address on Tuesday evening to mark the start of the summit, Biden pledged long-term support for Ukraine and hailed NATO as stronger than it's ever been in its history. Ukraine can and will stop Putin, the president said, especially with our full collective support, and they have our full support. On Wednesday, he said he was pleased all NATO members were pledging to expand their industrial bases and to develop plans for defense production at home. We cannot allow the alliance to fall behind, Biden said. We can and will defend every inch of NATO territory, and we'll do it together. So, you know, uh, nothing we don't know, folks, but uh, this man's legacy beyond uh, potentially being too stubborn to realize he can't do it anymore and handing a world-historic landslide uh, to Trump in uh, November, uh, this is this is Biden's legacy to the extent he'll have one is war, censorship and inflation, but mostly war, mostly war. If if this does get apocalyptic, we are going to remember these years as the turning point, And we are going to remember uh, this just relentless 
assault on the world order on the part of NATO, on the part of NATO, led by Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken, at all, for no reason that really applies to the uh, ordinary life of the ordinary person. It's just, as, as Tucker Carlson said, it's one of the greatest crimes of this century. Obviously, we have two at once going on now, the genocide in Gaza and this. Uh, it's just a horror show, and you see the pageantry of that uh, presented as some gathering of the world's virtuous people. Uh, right. And uh, when you look at the reality, you know, the, what they're advocating for are Ukrainian men being pulled off the streets, thrown into vans, suited up, and thrown on the front lines to be killed. That's what they're advocating for. This is not a pro-Ukraine coalition. This is, a, this is a coalition that seeks to use Ukraine to advance its own aims and enrich its own uh, sort of upper connected echelons. Well, that's what was funny <laughs> about him talking about Russian men wanting to leave the country. There, there are videos drop every day of Ukrainians trying to get yes. across the border to not fight in Ukraine. You've got Ukrainians all over the world. Um living in terror that they're going to be called back to Ukraine, they had to institute a policy of not renewing passports and visas in order to get Ukrainians who are living abroad to be forced into going back when their uh, passports expire. Um, so, you know, the idea that the people in Ukraine, oh man, they're, they're lining up at first at the beginning. But not now. They realize it's it's like World War One. It's a meat grinder. They're ju they're just being thrown out there as cannon fodder. Um, in the end, unless NATO is going to send its sons and daughters, they cannot win. As as Tucker pointed out in that appearance in Australia, they 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 can't win. It's not mathematically possible. There just are not enough people there. It doesn't matter what weapons you give them. In terms of history, remembering Joe Biden as being responsible, you know, he's the last in a long chain going back to not one inch east, the the promise we gave at the end of the Soviet Union about NATO expansion down through the Maidan coup and, and, and down to this. Uh, Joe Biden happened to be the guy sitting in the driver's seat at the moment, you know, maybe, who knows, Blinken and uh, Sullivan, more like. Um, this was the team that was there at the moment that the shit hit the fan. And instead of minimizing the damage, they decided to up the ante. And here we are on the verge of World War Three for no good reason at all. Well, that's the thing. I mean, they are here. You're right. Like, are they solely responsible for just this relentless effort by the West to intimidate and isolate Russia? No. But they're in the driver's seat at the decision point where you realize, right. oh, it's time to it's time to retreat. It's not right. time to go full bore. And, right. you know, our friend Matthew Ho made that point to us that, like, you know, um, as as much as this looks like you know a win for Russia, the, there's, it's an open question whether the West will give them that win or just flip the board entirely. And right. that is that will be Biden's legacy if this goes the way it's looking like it might. Um, well, and it's a very very scary thing. Well, and and one of the one of the ways you can see how much the world has flipped upside down, the way the world has inverted when you who. Who's flying the Ukrainian flags? The the people who jumped on board with every American military action for the last several decades, at least, they were right wingers. We always thought of them as right wingers, right? Anybody who, oh, we're going into Panama. Yeah, we're going into, pa yeah, I'm proud to be an American. Look at my yellow ribbon, right? Right. Now those are the libs, man. Those are the libs. When you, I, tr I traveled around. Now m eyes are more on Gaza. But I was uh, traveling around when Ukraine was more top of mind. And um, I showed some pictures of it. I was in New Orleans. The places you see Ukrainian flags are upper class liberal neighborhoods. That's where you're going to see a Ukrainian flag flying outside. Uh, who, who has that in their bio? It's all right. pretty privileged, college educated 
flips. The the liberals are now the warmongers. The people who have the old skepticism of that are it's a coalition of libertarians, traditional libertarians who have always been skeptical of America projecting power abroad that way, and MAGA. Exactly. Exactly. And I hate to be antagonistic to our MAGA friends, but the reason you don't see that same skepticism on the Israel-Gaza front is because, unfortunately, to a lot of our conservative friends, their anti-war politics seem to apply pretty exclusively to uh, white people. That's just the yes. way it looks like to me. Yep. Looks that way to me. Not making that, any accusations, that definitely but looked it's up that to way you to douche- dispel me of that notion. Yes. Yeah, definitely look that way at the douchebag dialogues. Yes. Please clap. <laughs> 